In this episode, we go over the odds of catching the rarest shiny Pokemon in all of Sword and Shield, as well as the odds of me making this video. 100, it was 100% I would upload this. Even with the rates of shiny Pokemon being more frequent than before, Sword and Shield manages to up the rarity of specific Pokemon with little nuances added in to make the odds of obtaining special breeds significantly harder than some. This does make some Pokemon insanely rare to be encountered and a real achievement to get. Here we are picking out the 5 Pokemon that managed to have the most trouble being obtained and earned the title as the rarest shiny Pokemon in Galar, due to their different forms as well as the difficulty that goes into being able to catch them. I also wanted to clear up the differences between Square Shinies and Star Shinies as the information changed from the time the previous rare video was uploaded. Like 2 days after. But here we are months later to check up on you guys and see if you managed to box these super shiny Pokemon in your journeys throughout Generation 8. Number 5. Low Key Toxtricity While it is usually a pain to hunt for shinies with multiple forms, Toxtricity is a fan of Pokemon of Generation 8 and a good starting point on this list of super rare shiny Pokemon. Going in vanilla and trying to hunt for a shiny amp form or shiny low key form will bring in an added challenge as hunting for a Toxel in the wild or breeding one will lead to a random nature and therefore a random chance of getting the Toxtricity form you want. Low key in this method is slightly rarer than amped as Toxel evolves by nature and there are only 25 in total, 12 natures for the low key form and 13 natures for amped, leaving low key with a 12 out of 25 chance or 48% chance to be encountered. This does make the low-key Toxtricity a slightly rare shiny Pokemon, as even if you aren't shiny hunting, the chances of running into a random shiny Toxel that evolves low-key is slightly less than amped. You are able to manipulate what the nature of the Toxel you breed or encounter in the wild is, as you can give an Everstone to the parent with the nature you want to breed it with and pass down, or while hunting for one in the wild, you can have a Pokemon in your first slot with the ability Synchronize and the nature you want the pop-up Toxel to appear as. It will then have that exact same nature too. It's important to know both as depending on if you want the Square Shiny version, you would need to know the Synchronized Wild Encounter method as Square Shinies are more frequent in the wild and the Star Shiny versions are more frequent while breeding so the Everstone would come in handy there. We'll go over the exact rates of these in the next section as that, that has a lot of Pokemon to discuss actually. Having to prep these methods aren't particularly difficult and with Masuda breeding, Encounter Chaining and the Shiny Charm, you are able to maximize the rates at which you can encounter the nature Toxel of your choosing to then evolve into which Toxtricity you want. It still does make Toxtricity one of the more rare to see shiny Pokemon with its multiple forms, equal to Alcremie, as even though there are 7 forms of shiny Alcremie, which leads to a huge grind fest of producing shiny Milkery, you are able to just give a held item to your Milkery and have it evolve into the shiny Alcremie with the colored hairpins and jewelry you choose. However, hunting Toxel has a bit more nuance with its nature methods. These two also share the fact that they both have Gigantamax forms, which is a form that cannot be bred, adding another layer to their rare shinies, also meaning having a star shiny version of their Gigantamax is incredibly difficult as stars are much rarer to be found in the wild with a much lower chance than squares. Also just having to even encounter a shiny in a max raid battle brings another assortment of difficulty to trying to obtain every shiny variant of both these Pokemon. Number 4. Feebas while Feebas is one of the rarest Pokemon to try and obtain in Sword and Shield on its own for its 1% encounter rate as well as having to fish it out, you might think any Pokemon you can just catch one of and then just have it breed into a personalized shiny production plant means that the hard part is over. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on because of the new shiny Pokemon animations introduced in Sword and Shield. Even though they did manage to increase the rates of shiny encounters in Generation 6 to 1 out of 4096, the new shiny forms add even more numbers to the equation. Hey everyone, just taking you off on a sidetrack here and welcome to our new segment of what's the difference between a square shiny and a star shiny. And this is what I piece together. Square shinies have a more frequent chance of being encountered in the wild while star shinies are more frequently seen during breeding. The square animation has a 15 out of 16 chance to appear on a wild encounter of a shiny Pokemon, leaving a 1 in 16 chance of encountering a star shiny Pokemon in the wild. The values are inverse while breeding with a 15 out of 16 chance for a star shiny animation on eggs and a 1 in 16 chance for squares. If you're then multiplying the odds of the rare animation with the base 1 out of 4096, which is barring any methods such as a shiny charm, Masuda method, or encounter chaining to increase that, you then get a 1 out of 65,536 rate to encounter a star shiny Pokemon in the wild, or the same rate at 1 out of 65,536 for squares on eggs. So once you catch any of the rare wild Pokemon such as a Feebas, getting a star shiny is not as rare as how rare a square shiny would be. 
because while you are able to breed Feebas for its shiny unlike some Pokemon, it will take a significant amount of time to be able to capture the specific square shiny Feebas as you would need to either hope for the 1 in 16 chance for breeding or grind out the taxing endeavor of Super Rod fishing on Route 2 with its only 1% encounter rate to maximize the 15 out of 16 chance and hope you don't end up with a, an accidental star shiny. This is pretty much shared as a difficult task among the many already hard to encounter in the wild Pokemon that I thought I'd list here as they all have their own little differences and encounters. Such as Super Size Pumpkaboo, Delmize, Gumi and Dino who count as one Pokemon together with their equal encounter rates but in different games, Turtonator, and finally Dreepy, which was the top spot on the last list even though some people will tell you it's just so easy to catch a regular one because everyone just gives them away in surprise trades. Which is okay, and nice that people are doing that for regular Dreepy, but if you're trying to get the ultra rare square shiny Dreepy from surprise trades, that's at least a 1 in 1 million chance and we're playing by in game odds here. And these are basically all the Pokemon encounters that share a similar rarity with Feebas, but with a slight chance in encounter differences. Well you know, I think this is an honorary top 10. So for ranking how hard these shiny square Pokemon are, that are only slightly different from one another, 10 is Toxtricity, 9 would be Square Demise for its overworld spawn which can be a bit easier to see in the wild instead of guessing what pops up in the grass, 8 would be Super Square Size Pumpkaboo as you can already see if it's super sized when it pops up in the overworld and only have to battle against those but also has a 1% spawn rate like Demise, 7 is Square Gumi or Square Dino for their 2% encounter only in rain and only depending on which game you have as their basically counterparts are rivals in generation 8, 6 would be Square Turnator as being in the grass and sun is harder than in the overworld and it's also going to explode in my face. 5 is Square Dreepy because, well it's not surprise trade Dreepy this time, it's, it's just grass Dreepy. And 4 would be Square Feebas as the only 1% chance plus fishing just adds in some extra time compared to running through the grass. And that's how we inceptualize a top 10 into a top 5 in number 4, but really just had to give a better explanation for squares and stars with Pokemon like Feebas and all these Pokemon on Feebas's level. And even with all of that, even though you might be set to hunt for the harder to obtain square shiny version of these Pokemon, there's still a completely random chance that you accidentally encounter these Pokemon with their easier to breed star shiny versions instead of the square, but in the wild. So no matter the path you choose, there is some over the top chance that you might just end up with the opposite shiny animation you are going for. And teaches us that the amount of Pokemon you actually have to encounter to catch every single one of them matches the sales number for all these games. Just, just these are a lot of numbers. Number 3, Ndidi. The best part about these shiny forms is that although there are some random variables in places, you do get to control most of it like Toxtricity, Synchronized Nature Manipulation. With Ndidi, you can manage to hunt these out in the wild without worrying about which gender pops up as the male is exclusive to sword and the female is exclusive to shield, but they do have a 5% encounter rate. However, not needing to add in that extra chance in knowing which game has the male and female does take a bit of worry off if you're going for that square shiny version in the wild. The added rarity then comes from breeding, where you are able to get both Ndidi in whichever game you have as you still are able to breed them, but if you're trying to farm for a star shiny Ndidi, you have no way of controlling the gender when trying to get both and you simply have to flip a coin and hope for that 50-50 on which version you'll get. So if you're trying to complete the hardcore Pokedex with every single shiny Pokemon, that's already a challenge. But going for the unreal Pokedex with every single shiny Pokemon, both square and star, on every form of Pokemon, then that's a can I even beat Pokemon Sword and Shield ever challenge. Like if you're using this video as a 100% guide. Might be a tad much. Number 2. Gigantamax Pokemon, in general. In general, Gigantamax Pokemon end up being on the rarer side of just getting a shiny version with them only being available in max raids and unable to be bred whatsoever. Usually Pokemon that can't breed, for shinies, manage to have some of the hardest rates in the games unless they're distributed or event Pokemon. However, Gigantamax forms manage to have all of these. They do increase the chances of encountering some of these Pokemon, which will help if you're hunting at that time. However, once those events end, which they did like a month ago, you'll have to go back to regular odds and hoping that you can encounter yourself an unbreedable shiny Gigantamax Pokemon. This again makes star shiny versions the rare forms for Gigantamax Pokemon. These forms are quite hard to just encounter on their own, so getting the preferred shiny version choice is much harder than normal with the available ways of encountering and the odds may fluctuate if new events for specific ones pop up again. Also some shiny versions are pretty hard to notice if you look away for a second and miss the animation. Looking at you Senescorch and Hatterene literally looking at you, I am not taking my eyes off the screen, I cannot tell which one of these are shiny. 
Gigantamaxes do also manage to have that added feeling of Shiny Lock Pokemon, where you aren't able to obtain some of the Gigantamaxes until they are released. And with Gigantamax Toxtricity just recently being made available, the only one left to be hunted for is Gigantamax Melmetal when it's out along with the DLC. Number 1. Sinistee This little rare cup was hinted at in my last rare Pokemon of Galar County, as not only the rarest shiny Pokemon to encounter, but also being one of the rarest Pokemon to encounter in general. With Sinistee's antique form having only a 1% encounter rate in the wild, its shiny version becomes astronomically difficult to obtain as you cannot by any means breed it into its antique form, meaning the counterfeit version is 100% of what you will get in eggs. You can also add in 6 perfect IVs if you want to roll the numbers into even higher chances of rarity because just like Gigantamax Pokemon and any other Pokemon here that you have to meet in the wild and cannot breed, it would be hard to get those IVs than hoping a parent drops them all onto their egg. And with Antique Sinistee only being able to be encountered in the wild, another Star Shiny bringing its 1 in 16 chance means Star Shiny 6 IV Antique Sinistee is the rarest Pokemon in all of Galar, even if you tried to spread 6 IVs across all the previously mentioned Pokemon. Or you know what, maybe the rarest are just all the shiny Gen 8 Legendary Pokemon, because it has a raw 0% encounter rate with them being shiny locked. But shiny Antique Sinistee is the rarest obtainable Pokemon.